Hello everybody, uh, it's uh, 10 to 7, Friday morning, Friday the 11th, thing. hang on, 8, 11th, that's right, yeah, I have to add up because I know it was the 7th on Monday, right, I talked last week about Goliath, okay, I think that's what I talked about, I published last week about Goliath, about things that have been getting me in my life and and things that we allow to get on us. Now, I think we try to keep a stiff upper lip, try to work our way through whatever way our reactions are, but at the end of the day we have a massive great Goliath over the world, don't we? And we have to look and say, yeah, he's there. The coronavirus. It is a massive great Goliath. There's loads of ways of dealing with this psychological humor. You know? There's the denial, ah, it's a conspiracy. Bloody government, they're doing this, they're doing that, it's them Chinese, they're this and the other. No. The fact of the matter is, it is there. Ah, what are you talking about? No worse than anything else. Why should we worry about it? Blah, blah, blah. The difference between this virus and all the viruses that we know is the fact we don't know this one. There's no cure. There's no way of dealing with it. Well, there is. The only way of dealing with it is that we keep separate from each other and we're locked down. That's the only way. Not financially and psychologically and every for, uh, socially is really something we, we need to avoid. So we have to turn around and say, yes, it's there. And in some respects, face it. And with some form of faith, however small that might be, realise the one thing that I said at the beginning of this, when God said to me, I am bigger than the virus. We can't quite understand that. Let's be honest. We'll say it, but can we really, 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 really deep down believe that and keep that in front of us? So, all we have to do is follow as much as we possibly can guidelines to protect ourselves from this virus. Guidelines, common sense, to protect ourselves from the virus. And try to keep life going as normal as possible. Okay? There are loads of fears, and it's always going to fear us in one way, shape, or form. So we have a massive great Goliath. I'm not trying to make it any worse. I'm not trying to make it any better. <coughs> I'm just saying what it is. That coronavirus, my view of it is that the coronavirus is not airborne. I.e. you walk out the door, it's not floating in the air waiting to get you. Okay. It's bodily fluid born yep so therefore if you're close to somebody and they cough on you we've had it haven't we in the past not we've probably had it in the future from whatever especially your, your little and great you know you get a big sloppy kiss you know oh it's great lovely that could be full of coronavirus okay So therefore, outside our own family, or our own safe bubble, that's a bubble that we know that those people are safe and haven't had any contact, okay, we must avoid that, like the plague. So avoid, keep away from people. When you wear a mask, what that does is if you do cough, it's not going to go all over the way. The air from you will go, but the 
the bodily fluid won't so it would greatly reduce that risk so therefore if you're going to necessary close contact places shops businesses and things like that because we need to keep them going to keep the economy going and so that we can have what we want to keep our well-being going okay so when we go into those we need to wear this mask so we don't spread anything to other people it's not going to save you i've seen a government thing say a mask will protect you slightly because that is one area or a main area where you can intake okay but the other area is in your eyes because they said that if you wash your hands you touch your eyes boom. in your ears is another one okay <laughs> to a point you can pick it up on your hands touch and it gets into your body okay so it's not just that so really in order to more protect yourself you need a face shield okay but that's what the medics use <laughs> full face shield and a mask gloves you have gloves and a, a suit and they are 90 percent protected you know to be fully protected is to fully cover your body and that's the only way to be fully protected and when people are actually dealing with coronavirus uh, patients if they're suffering from coronavirus, then that is what they do in coronavirus wards. They're, wards, they're fully protected like that. It's the only way to protect yourself. <laughs> okay? So, we just have to think about that. So, if we think about that when we cough, we could be spreading it. And when we that hits us, any tiniest particle hits us, it goes to the eyes where it can get in, goes to the mouth, nose, ears to a point. You know, it's a channel into there, so anywhere over the head is where it's going to get in the other thing is is when we're touching things that virus can sit on something for three days so something's delivered in a shop from heaven knows where you don't know whether it's going to get a virus on it or not it's come from other countries come from wherever it could have a virus on it so therefore when we're going out shops whatever we're doing where we are we're touching stuff every day when you come into your house wash your hands for 20 seconds good wash those hands gloves are in some respects a false protection because what you would have to do is every time you touch something you'd have to take the gloves off inside out and off dispose now that is all right in the petrol station we can put a glove on use a petrol pump roll it off backwards so that the outside of the glove goes on the inside into the bin job done you've saved it you've protected yourself but if you've got a pair of gloves on all day and then you walk in your house what's the point can you see my point right i hope that's helping my views of it so basically we need to go out there with whenever we're in close contact to make sure we wear a mask and hope that everyone else does other little tactics I think is, is, is say you're walking down the street and it's a narrow little street, little whatever, you're not going to keep two metre distance. If someone comes past you, just face away from them, okay? So that means that two faces are not facing each other. If you're walking along, right, and you're walking along, you just face away, yeah, and walk past them, it just helps to make sure that you're facing away from each other as you go past so that's a good especially in shops and things and anywhere you're going to get somebody who can't be arsed with it you know when you see the donkey coming along you know what i mean you think oh whoa, 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 whoa. let's just sort of take these or whatever you know there's a bit of a danger here a bit of a concern danger let's <coughs> sidestep this let's deal with it that way so just face away from people that's a way of avoiding that splashing we go <coughs> now when you're meeting cafes and pubs, of course you're going to have a meal. It's not a good idea to have your mask on all the time, is it? And the people you meet with, it's saying it's less than six, they will be people that you personally can track and trace. Okay? They will be people that you personally should know how they are. So if you're going to meet up with somebody, a friend, 
colleague, business, whatever it could be, it could be unnecessary to meet them from some other. Let's have a chat before. Um, everyone all right with you? It's whatever. Yeah, all your family okay and things like that. You know. And they'll say, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. And please, if you think, well, my auntie I saw last week tested positive, did they? Stay where you are. Go get yourself a test. Stay where you are. It happened to us last week. <coughs> you know, a friend of ours, my wife and I look after. He'd had a nurse come in to <coughs> see him who tested positive. So he had a test, we had a test, my wife stayed off work for couple of days we both all had tests all come back negative we're all fine but we checked we stopped checked okay that's what we did you know and took further precautions until such time as things were, were sorted out uh, so so that's fine so that's what you need to do just check with people um, and keep that track and trace in your head wherever you look write it down you know write down the details that you see you know I have plans to go and see a friend at the end of this month, a couple of weeks actually, and I'm thinking, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I should be ask, asking questions first, just saying, you know, how's things, you know, with you, everything, nope, we've no problems, has anybody had a test near you, yes, so and so had a test, or I had to go for so and so, so I had, sometimes you have to go to the hospital and then have a test, yeah, I had a test because I went to the hospital and it came back negative, that's great, I know you're safe, I had a test the other week, it's negative, it's unlikely, you know, We've done the best we can just to check. Right, I'll come up and see you. We'll have some good time. And if anything happens, just say, <coughs> back off. This is what happens where we see in these little spikes. The cases are going up. And they'll go up and down like that. Because what's happening is these areas are coming where someone's tested positive. Oh, they've shut the whole school down. Oh, they've tested positive. That's another case. Boom. These wouldn't have been seen in March. February, March, they wouldn't have been seen because we didn't have the testing facilities. Now we have, they're being caught and it's good that we've been getting them and nipping them in the bud. But it will show more. It's not as many as it was in March cases. It's not that bad, but it's showing more before we go into trouble. Okay. The government's doing their best to the um, in identifying the age groups that need now we can look at that kind of, oh, silly old buggers or bloody young uns. Da, da, da. No, it's education we need. It is. It's the youth that's just leaving school, you know, 17 to 20 year olds. <laughs> because they like to get together. Oh, you haven't got the pub now, so they're not bothered. All the mates jump together and they don't exactly think. So we need to just set them, hang on a minute, just think what's happening here. Think a little bit more. And let's get some into some form of trend for them, aren't we? Let's make masks a trend or something or whatever. You know, we can help them out to to understand a little bit more. Uh, more at risk groups, um, things like that. So there's lots of positive things we can do to work through. Now that brings that onto my own personal life or anything that we might be doing. Where our Goliath is there. Our Goliath. My Goliath is my lack of faith in myself. Right, that stems from my youth, okay? Stems from my childhood and my youth. When I was a kid, a little baby, they always tell the story. <laughs> you have your toys, little kid, little toddler, sat up, just sitting up or whatever, or crawling, whatever. And to try and get me to crawl and whatever in those days, in early 60s, they would move toys away. And nowadays, people say, well, why'd you take the toys away from the child? Well, I just sat there and played with my fingers. All right. They're fucking toys, aren't they? Playing my fingers. And as I got older, <coughs> I seemed to be steady and quiet. And... I either got placated, oh, you can have this, sweet, oh, ain't you lovely, you can have this, you can have that, I'll do this, for, we'll give him this, there you go, lovely, tap, 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 we fed him with this, we give him this, give him that, which made me think, <laughs> grow up to think that everything just fell off a Christmas tree, okay, so I never had it hard, and I never had it hard, I had my mum, 
I didn't have much relationship with my mum because she had to go out to work to earn. They decided to buy a house. My dad only had a small uh, job, just a labouring job. So our nurse, she was actually more qualified. She was a short-hand typist, etc. So she could be a PA and get a bit more money. So she went out to work to do that, which meant she couldn't have the full time to look after children, two kids, me and my sister. Um, so I went to my aunt. Now, my uncle was a different type. He was a little bit more qualified than my dad. He was an engineer. So it was his job. I'll put money up bloody table here. So he went out and grafted all day. He's an agricultural engineer, actually. And he used to graft all day. And he had a few little deals. So he got a bob or two or a bit of this and the other here, you know. So he always brought the brass in. My auntie looked, stayed at home and looked after all, up to six kids, I think. Eight when the two others came, if I remember. That's a small old in they had, sort of played in the ward, played in the field, we had plenty to do, was looked after there. But when I went to school, I didn't quite have the aptitude for things, so sometimes I was left last week, no one used to pick a team, in you? I love him, I love him, I love him. Mm. Nobody wants him. I was left on the, less left on the, on the queue, so nobody particularly wanted me, so I didn't think much of myself. My dad, bless his heart, Yorkshire way, he used to go, oh, here goes Dabba Duck again. He used to call me daft names like that, because he said, oh, what's chloroform doing now, you know, things like that. You know, to be, yeah, we can laugh now, but back then they actually hurt me. I didn't get much encouragement from dad. And the things that I am good at are the things I got some encouragement from him, okay? Mechanic-wise, fixing anything. Computers, I think I've picked that up myself as I've gone along. It's just because I'm a geeky type of person. That was that little geek inside of me. Electrical, I'm pretty good at that. Because my dad was an electrician's mate. And back in the 70s, when you could, we rewired a new extension that they built on Orthorpe Village Hall back in the 70s. Me and my dad did. So he taught me how a ring wing worked. He taught me how to wire things up and and I enjoyed it so I'm not too bad when it comes to wiring I do 12 volt wiring I would do house wiring but you know I'm out to these days I but you know I, I would do it if I needed I did it in her shed once <coughs> and you know so I can wire stuff I can well, I understand I've learned since about that. I'm not too bad when it comes to a, bunch of wiring in something, I mean, I can do that, you know, I can look at it and go, oh, hang on a minute, what's that doing, yeah, I see, yeah, boop, 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 boop. not so much auto electric wiring, it's a bit more complicated, but 12 volt wiring, wiring in my caravan, my pump system in the back of the van, I can handle that, I've learnt that, because Dad taught me that, you see, I had that um, and, and, and encouragement. Since, one of the greatest things that's probably come to me is my faith. Something hit me a long time ago, and I realised the actual reality through the Holy Spirit of God. Now, I've had it good, and when I do have it tough, there are times I'll curse at God. I mean that, and I got it last Thursday, did not this, not yesterday, but last week he got it. Since then, things have changed to make things a lot better, to open things up. You know, some of the things that I didn't have control of have come through. My truck's got fixed, and it's working fine. My um, I managed to get a business interruption loan, which is, is fine. I don't have to pay it for another year. It's a damn good interest rate, so it's a fairly good loan. And that means that we can sort out a few things that we need to deal with in the business to get it going forward. I've taken someone else on, so the turnover's getting better. The business is getting back on its feet, getting back to work. We can get there. We can get at it. So 
good things are coming through. So in some respects, Goliath isn't dead. I'm not standing there with his scalp in my hand and saying that bastard will never bother me ever again. But I've got on top of him. I've got him by the throat and saying, back off, buddy. And as I send him packing, he's gone packing into the hills. Sooner or later, he's going to have another go some other time. Okay? Because I believe our Goliath, Satan, who is trying to destroy us, we cannot destroy. Okay? Now, this Goliath was destroyed. Dead, destroyed. So, but the Bible says it was destroyed. We cannot destroy the big king of Goliath. That will be, if we're to align what, what happened there, and I'm thinking on, on the trot here, if we align what happened there, it was David. Jesus was genetically from Dave, of David's line, as it says. So, is that also a parable to show how Jesus will destroy Satan? And if that's the case, then we know that Satan is only trying to lie to us. Actually, he cannot beat us. He's actually just lying to us. And we think that we cannot be Satan. He'll always keep coming back. But faith in Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ will come back and defeat Satan once and for all. So we're fighting an enemy who's marked. And who knows he's marked. And all he's trying to do is take us, who are mere mortals, away from that fact. And I've just realised that. Because I started off saying that, didn't I? I started off saying that our uh, Goliath, Satan, cannot be beaten. We can just push him back and keep him back by our faith. No, no, no. That's not what the story of Goliath says. He <laughs> killed him carried his head as a trophy and the rest of the Philistines ran like hell and were pulled and pulled whatever ransacked by the Israelites okay so are we saying that Jesus Christ will come back and will destroy Satan forever amen I believe that when we hold that in our heart, we realise that yes, away from me, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. For he will come and he will destroy you. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Do you know, I've just realised that one. If you realise nothing more from this half hour video, rambling if you like. Not many people watch this. They don't get across the first bit. But I'm going to put that in the introduction. Please try and work through this because as I've gone through this, this has been recorded live, not recorded and written down and, and, and read to you. I've realised that yes we can. Satan the Goliath will fall. Jesus Christ will come with his slingshot one day and will zoom, end of you. Hallelujah. So as we just end, just in a little bit of prayer, just to say, Father, Almighty God, above all things, everything that we fear, 
you are above everything. You're above the coronavirus. You're above Satan. You're above everything. You will come one day and wipe this off the face of the earth, face of the earth and create a brand new for those who stick with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. There is nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God that is through Christ Jesus. His blood and his body was definitely shed. It is done. Hallelujah. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that we can carry that sword, that shield, that everything in front of us and work forward, that shield of faith, knowing he's done it. Hallelujah. Praise be to your name. We thank you for this. So as we go into the next week, the next day, that we can hold that right in front of us and work through our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks, folks. I've rambled on again. Uh, I'll publish it on my YouTube and then publish it on Facebook. Um, if you want to contact me at all, it's nice to know that you're there. I know there's one or two do watch this. And uh, I'll do it for those two, the three people. I'm not doing it for hundreds. I'm not doing it for tens or hundreds of people. I'm doing it for whoever. If it's just one person listens to this and kind of enjoys it and gets a bit of encouragement, that's what I'm doing it for. So thanks. Have a good, have a good week. And stand that. Remember, Jesus Christ will destroy that Goliath. Hang on to him. He destroyed that Goliath on the cross with his blood and body for you.